My name is Vladimir. I am a journalist. Do you consent to the recording and publication of the video? I give my consent. State your name, city, date of birth. Tur Denis Alexandrovich was born in 1991st year. He lived in the city of Kupiansk, Kharkiv region. What are you accused of? In that I was a police officer in occupied territory. In the police force in occupied territory? Yes. Tell the story. It's all banal. War. No work. Downsizing all around. I had to live on something. Feed my family. I found out about a recruitment program for the police and applied for it. You tell us how you came directly to them. Before that, you worked for the Ukrainian police, correct? No. No? No. I thought you were a cop before this. Misinformation. What did you do for a living? I worked at Novaya Pakta in Novi Karotich. When the war broke out I left for Kupiansk. Family? I have a family. Kids? There are children. How many kids? Two of them. Boys? Two girls. Girls. How old are they? Twelve and two. Did your wife stay home? Here in Kharkiv. In Kharkiv? Yes. When was Kupiansk occupied? In the early days. Right away? I forgot the date. Did you try to leave? I was in Kharkiv. I went to Kupiansk in early March. Did you go to occupied Kupiansk? Yes. Why didn't you go to the unoccupied part of Ukraine? I had family there. Why didn't you take the family? Where to? Anywhere, refugees get help, a little help, but they get help. It's hard, the child is one year old. Where to go? I think it's still better than going to work for the occupiers, or is it? It might be better, but there's a house there. Obviously, the house. They caused a lot of grief. People had homes, they had to leave them behind. It's hard to go somewhere, leaving everything behind. Mother and grandmother stayed behind. If you had known in advance that you were facing 12 years in prison and that you would likely have to serve those 12 years, what would your actions have been at that moment? I probably wouldn't go to Kupiansk. What would you do? Or just don't go to work? Is working for the occupying power fraught with consequences? As you can see. Not only do I see this, I need to bring this to the audience, to others like you who may be thinking about similar things. Is this a bad mission? Personally, I didn't do anything bad for Ukraine. You worked for the occupying power, I? You worked for the occupying power, that's all I'm saying, A. They kill, I worked for my family. I see. Russia invaded Ukraine? Yes. Russia has killed people and is killing people? Yes. I want to hear it from you. Russia is killing people? Ukrainians? I haven't personally seen it. Did you see the missiles coming into the houses? I saw it. Do you think Ukraine started shelling itself after Russia invaded or what? I'm trying to understand. No, of course not. So it's Russia doing it? I want to hear a simple retort from you. Russia is killing Ukrainians. Russia kills Ukrainians, Ukrainians kill Russians. And so on. Russia invaded our territory, right? We didn't go to Russia and try to do anything to them there? Who is the culprit? I don't know. <sighs> Here's Ukraine. Let's imagine a map. It has its own borders. Yes. This is where Russia is invading. Yes. Who started it? Russia. That's right. Russia is the perpetrator of the conflict, which is entering Ukraine and killing Ukrainians. You went to work for murderers. Are you harming Ukraine's security in any way? No. No. Let that remain your opinion, voiced. In what way have I done harm? <clears throat> You've done harm by the very fact that you're cooperating with murderers. And anyone who is going to cooperate with the killers in any way should know not to do so. Informing is my mission. Do you think that's a bad mission? No. What am I doing this way? You caution. So someone like you might not get 12 years or even 15 by watching our video with you.
посмотрев наше с вами видео. Yes. Good mission? Positive? Yes. I think so, too. Tell us more about how Russia invaded? What did you do in your position? How did Russia withdraw? <coughs> I don't know how Russia came because I was in Kharkiv. I got it. Without a fight, it seems. They came in peacefully. Have you seen the exhumation in Izium? After their peaceful exit? Yes. How many casualties? It's not in Kupiansk. When I was working, my duty was to patrol the city. City patrol? Security. You catch a lot of bandits on patrol? I didn't catch anyone, it was just a matter of keeping order. Did you plead guilty? Yes. Why? When you say you've done nothing wrong, I counted on mitigating circumstances in a lighter article. Yes, a heartfelt confession. There's nothing else here. You told the truth. You took a job in the so-called People's Police. How long did you work there? Two months. Was the pay good? It was enough back then. Was it enough to support a family? Yes. How did Russia leave the territories? I can't talk about it because I was arrested in the first days of deoccupation. So the deoccupation has already happened? You must have seen something. The deoccupation was on the 9th. I was arrested on the 9th or 10th. I did not see how further events took place. When they left, did they say they were leaving? Not for me, no. They didn't say anything? I don't know. Did they publicize it? No. Have you had any conversations about it? About them leaving? Yes. No. Everyone was patrolling like nothing happened? That's about right. A certain number of people left, of course, or rather they were taken with them. That's the thing. There were cadres as civilians and those who cooperated ran away. Why didn't you do that? I don't know. Didn't you realize that this poses a risk of liability? I understood, but I didn't think it was so serious. Not that serious. Do you need an education to become a people's police patrolman? Do you need to take training courses? What is needed for this? It is enough that you served in the army. Serving in the army is enough, yes. This is in my case. It's clear. Why should Russia exchange you? Why shouldn't it? <laughs> There's no need to pose the question like that. They took responsibility for us. As they say, they do not abandon their own. I feel excited. Let's do more. Let them go to the end. That is, let them keep their word? Yes. If they don't leave theirs, are you one of them? Yes. You and I found out that you worked for the occupation authorities. You stuck to your opinion, I stuck to mine. The viewer has his own opinion. But in fact, you were. Yes. So you are one for them? Russia. Take yours. We don't need them here. They launched a special operation to save people like you, right? I don't know. Putin said this. As a result, you just sit here. We are ready to hand you over without hostilities, without any problems. And there are dozens like you. Maybe even hundreds. They just don't want to take them. That's all. Something is wrong with the concept of protection, don't know. What if they don't take it, so no. What attitude will you have towards Russia if you serve your 12 years? I'll answer when I get out.
I was ready for this answer. Do you give voluntary consent to its recording and publication? Yes, yes. Last name, first name, patronymic, date of birth, where are you from? Vladimir Nikolaevich, October 26, 1981, from the city of Donetsk. Mm -hmm. Did you live like this in Donetsk all the time? No, my father sold an apartment there in 2002 and bought it in Makivka. House. Was Makivka also under occupation? It is still under occupation. Yes. How did you end up here? I worked in Russia for a while, in Kazan, five years ago. Once again, I did not have registration and was deported from there, at the end of 2018. They didn't let me cross the border either in one direction or the other. And I couldn't return home to Donetsk, it was occupied. I stayed in neutral territory for five days, and then people told me how to get to Kharkov. Do you have a Ukrainian passport? Yes, an old type passport. Did they let you through okay? Yes, they had some questions, but overall it was fine. I arrived by bus, I don't remember, either on Gagarin Street, or on Gerald. Why were you convicted? It seemed to them that I had betrayed my homeland. Am I reading? Need to. If it seemed, then I am forced to read. Yes, read it, of course. On March 5, 2022, fulfilling the previous conditions, I contacted a representative of the Russian Federation using the Telegram application and provided information about the deployment of military equipment in the Saltovsky district of Kharkiv. Within an hour this was followed by artillery shelling of the northern part of the Saltovka region. You say what they thought, but here it is clearly written when, where and what you pointed at. You aimed artillery at Ukrainian military equipment. You transmitted the coordinates of this equipment. Yes. Why do you say that it seemed to them? That's right. I meant that they thought it was correct. At 11 o'clock in the morning you transmitted the coordinates, and 30 minutes later the artillery shelling began. Exactly. Yes, literally 26 minutes. Well, roughly speaking. It's logical. Logical, yes. Without you this attack would not have happened. Is anything written here about victims? Hardly. No. Have you read this in detail? I've been reading for a year and a half, certainly. There we are only talking about infrastructure. Yes. It is unclear how many people died as a result of your tip. But obviously people died, right? Well, logically, probably yes. I don't know. I wasn't there at that moment, so I can't say. And now the question. When you reset these coordinates, did you think what you were doing and why? I don't know how to answer you. In any case, it was not rudeness on my part, they asked me what was going on there. I told you. It didn't look like transmitting coordinates. Yes, then this is how it had to be done. Have you received money for leaking information? I did not receive money and did not leak information. The SBU checked this after the arrest. Not a single ruble was transferred to my account. I don't have bank cards at all. What I just read is not a leak of information. I didn't receive any money. You didn't receive any money, that's clear. But here it is written about leaking information. At that moment I had one motive. I needed to somehow return to my mother, father and daughter. And at that moment, I thought that they would tell me some way, because all my friends remained on the other side. I didn't have anyone here. Have you decided to help? No. I didn't want to pass on the information, just wondering if there was a way to move. And then I was asked about the environment, what was going on around me. Got it. You decided to help yourself out by communicating personally with a Russian representative. Yeah, at that point it was, I guess it was. You thought, I'll socialize, I'll make friends, I'll get help. That's what I thought. There. So it's simple. Why couldn't you explain it right away? What's the problem with just saying so? Is there no one here to talk about it? 
Yeah, yeah. If I understand you correctly. That's right. That's right. And yet you claim that when you were transmitting information at 1126 you did not realize that they could fire on this territory? No such idea at all. Why not? Because then there's, ah. Uh, no. Did you realize the threat of transmitting that kind of data? Not at the time. If you knew what was coming, would you do it? No. It's clear. Do you consent to the recording and publication of this video? Give name, date of birth, place of residence. Kolomaitsev Alexander Alexandrovich Kolomaitsev. Born in 1993. City of Kupinsk, Kharkiv region. Why are you convicted? For cooperation with the Russian Federation. How? When and where? When Russian troops entered the territory of Kharkiv region. Where exactly? Specifically to Kupinsk. Before that, I worked at Kupena Bread Products Combine. I was the chief engineer. When the Russians came in, the director of the enterprise. I'm gonna turn this off. The director of the enterprise left. I was left in charge. What kind of enterprise? Kupiansky Combine, elevator. Grain, huh? Yeah, grain elevator, grain. When the administration appeared, the Kupinska Military Civil Administration of Kharkiv region, they gathered all the entrepreneurs, farmers, in order for them to continue to fulfill their functional duties. I was then appointed director of the enterprise. Who organized this? Civil Military Administration. Who was in charge of the administration? Ganchev Vitaly Konstantinovich. Where is he now? In Russia. Ran off to Russia? I guess. Why did you stay? There was no opportunity. How's that? The bridges have been blown up before. You wanted to leave? Yes. Look, so I understand. Are you pro-Russian? My whole family is from Russia. Are you pro-Russian? I'm a normal Russian person. I'm a Slav. Slav? Yes. What does this have to do with Slavs? Well, Slavs are both Russians and Ukrainians. And the Poles? No, the Poles don't. Are you sure? That's what I'm saying. You're misinformed. I have this information. I will not interfere with your living in this illusory world. If Russians, where there are 190 nationalities, among which more than half are not Slavic at all, and for you Russians are Slavs. And Poles, who are practically all Slavs by 100%, but for you Poles are not Slavs. Well, let's just leave it at that. Anything you'd like to say for yourself? Yes. May I address the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation? I request to be traded at the next exchange. And I want to appeal to the Minister of Human Rights. I consent to the exchange of me for a Ukrainian prisoner of war. I also appeal to the Civil Military Administration, asking for assistance in realizing the exchange of prisoners. My name is Vladimir. Do you consent to recording and publishing? Yes. Surname and first name, date of birth. Denis Valerievich Reznichenko, born in 1989, Kharkiv region, Izium City. Reason? Collaboration. I worked as a watchman, at first guarding a building, and then the police building. You worked as a watchman until Izium was occupied. Did you guard a regular building? Yes. And then the occupation authorities made a police station there? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. And you continued to guard him? Well, yeah, let's put it that way. Well, there was nowhere else to go. Do you support Russia at all? You're pro-Russian. Yeah, well, how can I tell you, and no, and... And no, and no, and no, and yes, and yes, and no. Go ahead, make your choice. I want to work quietly and not be in jail, just like that. How can I tell you? I don't know, I've never done an interview. Yeah, it's understandable that I don't have professional speakers here, it's W. It's not like anyone's counting on your eloquence. 
I just can't understand how your life happened like this, once and for all. Yeah, I stayed there. Yeah, they've taken over the administration. Did you plead guilty? I worked there, what's to hide? You volunteered. It turns out, yes. There's some signatures and some negotiations. Expertise. Briefly. Did they give you some kind of identification? The only time I ever saw that ID was in court. You only saw it in court, like it was printed for the court? No, in court I was provided with an ID and I hadn't seen one before that. A certificate was printed for you, why? Everyone who worked there had a credential. Who was your ID? The way I read it, I was on patrol duty. Uh, patrol division? Well, yeah. And did you continue to guard that building? I came in the evening, left in the morning, guarded at night. Do you realize they've set you up with this document? That's them. Now as I've started to conceptualize this a little bit, now. All right. In that case, what can you say about your signature when you signed for this credential? There were many instances, I was given a piece of paper, I had to sign it, and then they would finalize everything. Crime solved. It's all clear. I've been there. It's all clear now. Because it looked so simple at first, I guarded, guarded, sat, came, further guarded. You have received the document and signed it. Maybe you didn't realize you'd gotten the document. You do realize how that sounds, right? Now, yes. Time passed, I started thinking more. You get it, don't you? Now, yes. It's easier to understand. Yes. Would you go that route again? No, it's not. No, huh? You probably belong to them. So they should probably accept you. It's not like I don't know their excitement. What advice can you give to people like you who are in the occupied territory? Need to do what you've been doing? No. Because the Ukrainian security service, they fried them hard. They were punished, severely punished, that's all. They don't understand. They believe in Russia, I guess. Yes? Imagine them coming to your place and taking over such a large area. They went everywhere like that, didn't they? They must have been drunk. Have they been drinking? Yes, they did. Have you been drinking? Yes, I did, before the war. Who are we and who are they to us? You don't want any more of this? No. Okay. She met there, her daughter was taken out, and no one else was let out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The daughter is 13 years old. It's fine. They are, as I understand it, not very friendly with Russia. Yes. They know what's what, don't they? Yes. Because there was a man in front of you, and he said, everything is fine in Russia. I don't know if I should change his mind, let him go and see. Corrector. Yes? Is that your verdict? Who should I give it to? Put it on the table. I'm Vladimir, a journalist and blogger. Maybe you've seen me here? No? Let's get started. Did you sign the POW exchange request?
your collaboration is ruled out. I don't know what the right word is. Here's what it is. What are you trying to say? Here you go. 16th school. What was the sentence? 12 years. Targeting the school isn't enough to get that term? That's enough. It seems to me there could be a life sentence there. It could be. This girl explained it to me via telegram. She said nothing would happen if something happened there. We'll need to. Where did she come from? I don't know, she texted me. Pro-Russian views? No. In the chat room. In the chat room. I went to work in the morning and evening. What was your job? Fruit vendor. Did you sell vegetables at the supermarket? Yes. I understand. It's funny. Do you have a wife, children? I had a girlfriend. I mean, we had a baby. It's been two years since the baby was born. It turns out that I lived with her for three years. It's been a year since I was taken off to war. For the sake of a civil marriage, she had a child. A baby was born that year, but it died. A child died. What's next? Work. Dog. There was nothing else. I've been watching movies. What locality? This is the city of Severodonetsk. Severodonetsk. Uh, well, you. The word that was there. What word? It had my first name, last name, and middle name. And she texted me, give up already. I am just disabled since childhood and can stutter in my speech. There's nothing wrong with that. It said it's going to be okay, let's talk about it. It seems to me that it is impossible to explain it in Ukrainian. Konstantin Valentinovich. I don't. I'm in this. I'm trying to understand. How can it be considered a joke if they write in such a semi-official style? Good afternoon. Help. What I heard from you. Things were a little different. How? Good afternoon, surname, first name, patronymic, we are Russians from Russia, surrender your positions. And I somehow, uh, and you thought this was a joke. It's not a joke. Well, I, uh, just in case I inform the viewer. If someone writes something like this and someone thinks that it is a joke and it is possible to joke in this respect, such people will be caught by the SBU. They face a harsh punishment. 12 or 13 years I have seen such conditions. 15 years and a life sentence. 15 years and a life sentence. What did you decide to do after her messages? I subjected the 16th school to artillery fire, and that was the end of it. Why did you decide to shell the school? Did you believe her? Because I had, uh, I have. I didn't have any particularly bad motives. Did they give you money? No. They didn't give you the money? 
It's stupid. Why did you do it? That's all I want from you. I just want our viewers to understand why you did it. Somehow I did it and that was it. I'm in no way. Well, if, uh, to put it this way. You go to the store and buy bread. Why? To eat. You're directing artillery fire at the school. Why? I was told the missile didn't hit there. But it could have happened. Did you realize that you could have caused the deaths? Who was responsible? My psychological health began to deteriorate due to the death of my child. Because of death, life and people. Right? I was told that a lot of children die a year in this hospital where it is located. I don't know about that. You can say whatever you want and to whomever you want. That's you. Yeah, me, we did it. In this hospital. I was told that this hospital has gas. What did they say? I can't really put together what you said, but I take it that from the information you've received and the psychological trauma of the child's death. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. I'm from the Ukraine. Why would a person with your views suddenly decide in an instant to point a Russian missile at a school? Or anywhere? The fruit trade in March. You're a full, normal person. You're responsible for your actions. And yet you went through with it. Has there been a single message from this girl? On Telegram. A few messages. What else did it say? Something was written about Crimea, I don't remember. How did you pass on the information? Via telegram. Did you take pictures? No. Geolocation? Yes. Geolocation. <laughs> I won't get an answer out of you. I'm just trying to understand why you did it. I just can't explain it to you. She fed me and spent her pension on me. The pension is Ukrainian. I got it. Are you disabled as a child? Yes. Do you have any nuances at this point? I'm leading up to the question of who Russia is using. There were scared people here yesterday. Old people who were intimidated. Disabled children. In short, people. Do you realize that you have committed a cruel and enormous folly? In my life, yes, and that's for the rest of your life. Now you want Russia to trade you. Maybe I'll be traded. Abandon hope, all who enter here. I can still understand the first prisoner who did it because he thought there were Slavs there, but everywhere else is not Slavs. He seems to be talking, but he's insane. You say glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes, but Crimea must be given back. If you are a pro-Ukrainian person, why will Russia take you away? Do you understand that? No. That's what I thought. 